biggest hits in Stanley Cup history. If one is not into trickery, another way you can be entertained by hockey is the fights. In fact, there is a certain faction of the hockey community who finds that to be one of the main reasons why they enjoy watching hockey. Today's video is going to be one which is going to contain fights on the biggest stage, the Stanley Cup. For video number one, that is going to be in the 2019 Stanley Cup between the Boston Bruins and the St. Louis Blues, where a hit on one end of the ice ends up in a fight on the other end. It started when the Bruins' Tory Krug bulldozed an unsuspecting St. Louis player up 3-2 with 10-21 left in the game. Then, just a little while later, Blues left winger. David Perrone started putting his hands around, practically tackled Krug, and dislodged his helmet. And if you're wondering now, there was no penalty assessed. At the time this happened, the Bruins were up 3 Two and scored one more goal for a four. Two win, but they lost the series in six games. Moving on to hit number two, this one occurred just one game later in the same series when Blues center Oscar Sundqvist barrels into Charlestown, mass native Matt Gruzelchik, who ended up laid out on the ice, which immediately instigated one of the most exciting things that happens in hockey, a fight. It's unclear as to what penalties occurred on the play. For hit number three, we have game three of the 2019 Stanley Cup, when St. Louis's Braden Shannon Boston's David Pasternak had an unfortunate exchange of two bodies just colliding with each other as opposed to it actually being a hit. A collision which sent Shen mid-air in Game 5 of the Stanley Cup, one which the Blues won 2-1. Moving on to number 4, we have Marcus Johansson in the same series and Game doing a spin move while shooting and getting hit at the same time. Unfortunately, he did not make the shot. For number five, we have a play in the 2017 Stanley Cup where Pittsburgh star Sidney Crosby takes a hold of Nashville's P.K. Subban and holds him down in almost chokehold. And as I'm sure you can imagine, Subban fought back. The end result was that there was a two-minute minor on both creating a four-on-four -four situation with a 132 left of the first period of Game 5, one which the Penguins won 6-0 and ultimately won the series in six games. Moving on to number six, we have a hit that could be one of the most influential hits in Stanley Cup history, which happened in the 2011 Stanley Cup. This is when the Canucks' Aaron Rome lowered his left shoulder into Boston's Nathan Horton as Horton was delivering a pass and knocked his breath out. This was something the Bruins did not take very kindly to and used it as motivation for the rest of the Stanley this? Cup as they ended up winning game three, eight, one. And from that point on, the Bruins outscored the Canucks at an astonishing rate of 21, two. The play itself turned into a five-minute major for interference. At the time that the hit happened, the game was scoreless in the first period. Moving on to number seven, we have the Bruins' Brad Marchand, who has a reputation for getting on his opponent's nerves, force one Canuck in toward the boards, immediately flips a second onto his back, and then the results are what you would expect after that. A fight while up four goals in the third period. For number eight, we have the same game, but earlier when Thornton delivers a hit to Vancouver's left winger Alex Burrows about five minutes into the game, and things only intensified from there. Moving on to number nine, we have Janik Hansen, also in the same game, step into the Bruins' Tomas Kaberli for revenge on an earlier hit. For number 10, we have the Bruins' Dennis McQuaid get tag-teamed by a couple of Canucks, the first one holding him to the boards and then got leveled by Vancouver's left winger Rafi Torres. Moving on to number 11, we have the Bruins' Johnny Boychuk put a stick into and then nailed Victor Osrekovic into the ground, and yes, that did turn into a penalty on Boston. Number 12 features Bruins goalie Tim Thomas, who even got in on the action, sending the Canucks player flying after ensuring that one of his own players will get it. Keep in mind, this was a game in which the Bruins outscored Vancouver 8. One after Horton played and were looking for revenge. For number 13, we have Vancouver's Ryan Kessler practically go airborne on the Bruins player, whom the initial TV commentator deemed as defenseless due to his position has to take yet another hit. All of these hits very well could have been revenge on previous hits, starting with the one from Thornton. In yet another act of crassness for number 14, from the Bruins toward the Canucks, the Bruins, Milan Lusik. After teammate Dennis Seidenberg checked Burroughs, Lusik punched him. This concludes all of the hits from Game 3 of the deadly 2011 Stanley Cup Finals in Game 3, one which racked up 145 penalty minutes 
Now on to other games in the 1970 Stanley Cup. For number 15 in the 1970 Stanley Cup final between the Boston Bruins and St. Louis Blues, we have a play where Ken Hodge slams the Blues Phil Guarrett, whom the initial announcer for the game described him as the most gentlemanly player into the boards in era where players did not wear helmets. The Bruins ended up winning the series in seven games. For number 16, we have the play that Bruins fans love and Blues fans probably love to hate, although it's not so much a hit as it is a trip. If you're a Bruins fan, chances are you've seen that picture of Bobby Orr flying through the air as he scored in overtime, giving the Bruins the Stanley C despite being tripped by Blues defenseman Noel Picard, which was a major determining factor in getting the Bruins the cup in 1970, giving the Bruins the first Stanley Cup in almost 30 years. One fun fact about the picture, it only happened because another hockey photographer went up to the concession stand to buy a beer. According to Straight.com. Moving on to number 17, we have the 2015 Stanley Cup playoffs where the Winnipeg Jets, Dustin by Fuglian, felt it was time for the Anaheim Ducks, Thomas Fleischman, to go home in game one as he quite literally put him in the Winnipeg bench. Anaheim won that game 4-0 and also swept Winnipeg in four games. For number 18, we have Tampa Bay's J.T. Brown put a Chicago Blackhawk player on the ground right after a save that kept the score 1-0 Tampa Bay with just under five minutes left in the first period of Game 2, a game that Tampa Bay won 4-3. However, Chicago took the series in six games. Moving on to number 19 in the same game, we have Tampa Bay's Steven Stamkos charging the net, but is tripped up by a Chicago defender as he shot, which kept the game tied at two with a little more than seven minutes left in the second period. Hit number 20 is more of a collision by teammates, which resulted in an oopsie goal for the Chicago Blackhawks in Game 5 of the 2015 Stanley Cup, when Tampa Bay's Victor Hedman and goalie Andre Balasevsky collide, leaving a clear path for Chicago's Patrick Sharp to score the first goal of Game 5 with 13.50 to go in the first period, and it turned out to be a key moment as the Blackhawks won 2. One. Moving on to number 21, we're going to game four of the 2011 Stanley Cup. Remember, this is one game after the deadly hit put on Joe Thornton, where Boston's Dennis Seidenberg gets on top of the Vancouver goalie, which started a pileup that looked like a couple of football teams on the goal line of a football game. However, there was no goal, keeping the score one. Zero Boston, a game which they eventually won four. Zero. For number 22, we have Seidenberg again, who this time puts Canucks' Dennis Erhoff into the boards as they met shoulders. Moving on to hit 23, still in Game 4 of the 2011 Stanley Cup, we have the Bruins' Patrice Bergeron, who sometimes can be just as physical as Marchand drill a Vancouver player into the boards. Unfortunately, there wasn't any exciting finish to that play. For number 24, we have the Bruins' Marchand duck one player and then put another into the boards, which started a fight, as Boston appeared to still be trying to get back at Vancouver for that vicious hit on Horton in Game 3. For number 25 and the next Vancouver victim, Alex Burroughs is delivered a hit by somebody you would not expect, Bruins goaltender Tim Thomas, which causes 6-9 Bruins defenseman Zidane Ochara to go after Burroughs. 